Why is everyone talking about upstart stock? What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor and today we're going to be speaking about one of the most heavily shorted stocks on the market right now. A stock that is also down over 90% on the 52 week chart. That stock is Upstart. So a lot of you guys will probably remember this name from when they did initially go public back the end of 2020. And you can see now they're pretty much back at the levels they went public at. Which doesn't seem too insane given the last year, but given the fact that this company briefly hit $400 a share and they are now down at $23 a share, some crazy things that must have gone down you would assume. Now in case you don't know who Upstart are or what they do, they offer what they say is a better model for credit assessment. They claim that when client lending partners, which are banks and credit unions, use its platform, interest rates are 43% lower than those of banks that only use traditional credit scoring models. And they can help minorities out a lot more, people who don't necessarily have perfect credit scores. It's a really awesome concept. It's a really awesome business. It's one that everybody should want to do well. So in today's video, we're going to focus on two things. We're going to focus on what has really gone wrong for this company. Why are they down so much? We're going to compare the most recent quarterly report to the one that they released first when they went public. We're going to speak about that short interest. We're going to speak about the implied volatility here and where we can expect some absolutely crazy moves. And we're just going to give you know, uh, thoughts on whether or not this can be a good stock to have in your portfolio for the long term, for the really high risk guys out there. So right before we get into all of that juicy information, can I please ask you to hit that juicy like button? It really would be appreciated, my friends. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know, are you an investor or are you thinking about trading them for the potential short squeeze? And please, my friends, subscribe if you are indeed new around here and want more content. So why is everybody talking about them? Well, the company's platform offers the potential for a truly disruptive experience. In the current macroeconomic environment, the model isn't performing as well as investors has hoped, and the company's future is up in the air, making it a risky but potentially lucrative stock to own. So right now, this really is the definition of a high-risk, high-reward stock. Going back to the numbers that we spoke about in the intro, these numbers suggest a model that highly outperforms the traditional credit scoring system. So again, guys, it's innovative, it is disruptive, it is what growth is all about. It could be revolutionary for how loans are approved, putting more money to work for more people, specifically those at the lower end of the credit totem pole who previously had a harder time getting loans. Upstart says that 80% of people have never defaulted on a loan, yet less than half have access to prime credit, whereas their system takes many more factors into consideration than older models, also approves more minority borrowers, which is fantastic. Upstart says that it approves 43% more black borrowers at 24% lower interest rates, and 46% more Hispanic borrowers at 25% lower than traditional borrowers. Awesome. So this led investors to enthusiastically embrace the stock when it went public just a year and a half ago. And I remember this so well. I remember being like, wow, I really, really missed out on this one. Now, keep in mind, guys, when this went public was when pretty much you could throw money at any growth stock and make easy money. Markets were a different place. Now you can throw money at pretty much anything and lose it. Back then, you could throw it at anything and make it. It was a different time. It was a very fun time. And it's one that... All of us investors are hoping to get back to sometime in the near future. I remember waking up every day and thinking, where am I going to throw my money today to get these guaranteed gains, baby? So why are they not performing as well as of this moment in time? Because they truly were performing really, really well. Well, Upstart stock is tanked as investor confidence has not been matched this year by financial performance. Upstart's torrid growth has been shrunk to more of a trickle with an 18% year-over-year revenue gain in the second quarter. But they also posted a net loss of 32 million, their first loss since going public. Now, I know 18% sounds good, but compared to the numbers they were throwing up, it's very, very lackluster and is one of the primary reasons the stock has come down so quickly just, just from here. You know, obviously it's been coming down an awful, awful lot, but this Ireland's came down a lot. And then from this Ireland, they went on a run and then again near 50%. Well, 30 something percent gone. Management said last year when it demonstrated growth that may have been too good to be true. It was operating in an environment flooded with pandemic stimulus money. That's now dried up, and this year's numbers are competing with those on a year-over-year -year basis. So obviously the numbers are going to look worse. They're performing in a much worse market. Further complicating that, as the Fed has raised interest rates to battle inflation, there's higher risk of defaults, making lenders more cautious about proving loans. So again, these guys kind of got hit from both sides. This atmosphere puts Upstart's model to the test. Can it outperform traditional models in this less favorable environment? Ultimately, what does this mean for investors? 
There's still a lot of question marks here, which is why Upstart stock is a hot topic. And it is. You'll see it. There's a lot more people speak about it right now on, you know, pretty much everywhere. If it does indeed end up outperforming the industry, its stock could be explosive again. And this is absolutely true. We're actually going to look at some of the valuation multiples. And you'll see that it's not too different to the average S&P 500 company as of right now. Making it considerably de-risked to when it was literally, you know, 10, 15 times the price of where it is right now. But if it does not demonstrate the ability to substantially determine credit risk more accurately over time and improve default rate as a result, it could remain the dud it's been so far in 2022, and this could literally be the start of it going down even lower. As a business with low fixed cost, a high gross margin, and plenty of cash on hand, it can withstand current challenges and maintain its advantage, says CEO. So really guys, this is your standard story of a growth stock that went public in the end of 2020 or even the middle of 2020, there's a lot of examples there. And, you know, it went up because that's what all these growth stocks did. As I said, we came in every day. We were able to throw money everywhere. There's no two ways about it. It was harder to find a losing stock than a winning stock back then. And then, you know, obviously they thrived in that scenario. They thrived in that environment. And now they're going through the real everyday challenges of an actual business that needs to grow. Now you'll see the short interest here. They are the third name when we look at the most shorted stocks. Currently, near 40% of the float is shorted. Now, this is one of the big reasons that people are speaking about them so much right now. Everybody loves a good short squeeze. Everybody loves a potential short squeeze. That's why so many people are speaking about Bed Bath & Beyond as of right now as well. Yeah, it, it's right up there with the best of them in regards to how heavily shorted this is. When is the squeeze going to happen? We obviously can't be sure. But if we look at the implied volatility, okay, on the options chart, the average IV right now is at 141%. That is absolutely insane. Just as we've been recording this video, the stock's gone from red to green 3%. There is huge, huge moves happening here. But yeah, that IV is not something to be messed with. And that's why right now, guys, this is very high risk, high reward in the short term at the very least. You can say what you want fundamentally about the long term. You can look at the valuations. But short term, this is extremely high risk. Now, whenever I see a stock being shorted this heavily, I always like to see what institutions are actually doing. If there's many of them buying or if there's more of them selling. Because a lot of the time, you know, they manipulate the markets. They shove the markets down as low as they possibly can while building up call options, while building up positions at cheap prices, and then boom, out of nowhere, they cover those shorts, they push it up. That's why people love their short interest, the high short stocks, I mean, because you can see those crazy upward moves. Now, when we look here, okay, we can see over the last month or so, a few completely closed out positions, and mostly sells here. Um, yeah, there is some people still buying up, but if we go down a little bit back, this is what I found quite interesting, the 29th of the 8th, we can see some new positions being opened. And we can actually see quite a lot of buys happening here. So we're seeing both sides here. But honestly, you're seeing a lot of positions being opened initially and a lot of positions being added to from institutions, which I think is going to get, you know, the retailer quite excited at the potential of a short squeeze. There's another percent gain in literally <laughs> a couple of minutes. Let's just take a second to look at this chart. Yep, that's the five minute chart from 2268 to 2394, just like that. Uh, this obviously is not the start of, well, it could be the start of a short squeeze, but this obviously is not the short squeeze happening. This is just the stock moving. So when I look at, you know, that short interest, when I look at what institutions are doing, I would be led to believe that, yeah, there could well be a short squeeze coming in the near future. And I think that's why people are getting so excited. Now, I'd also like to point out, again, if we look at that chart and I bring you all the way back to when they did indeed, you know, go public all the way back here went public what at about 25 ish dollars a share and right now we're below that price so it's interesting to go look at where the business is now compared to where they are when they went public so most recent earnings report our total assets are at 1.917 okay whereas beforehand they were at 477 now liabilities were lower at 177 now we're at 1159 but there clearly has been a lot of growth and the cash and restricted cash on hand has pretty much tripled. The loans, notes and residuals, 6x. So they quite clearly are in a better cash position, but that's not... So they quite clearly are in a better cash position, but again, posting their first quarterly loss since going public definitely is going to have an effect on some investor confidence. And again, you can see that revenue coming down and that contribution profit coming down quarter over quarter considerably, bringing us back to pretty much year ago levels more or less. So again, 
confidence in investors is going to be taking a hit here. One of the reasons people were so, so happy to invest back when they went public was the growth we saw. Look at that compound annual growth, 62%, 18 through 19 and 19 through 20, seeing insane growth. Conversion rates were getting better and better as well. The percentage of loans that were done automatically was going up and up and up as well. So I think this company does have to prove that they can withstand, you know, some headwinds. They can withstand some challenges in this current environment because they're not going anywhere anytime soon. And, you know, after the Fed speaks today, it could be just another another bad thing for the company in the short term at least. Me personally, you know, if we look at them and we do go ahead and have a quick look at some of the valuations. I mean, look, their forward PE is at 14.93. Um, I think the S&P right now is averages about 16. Their PS is 1.76. I think the S&P averages at like 1.67, 1.68, somewhere along those lines. So the valuation metrics aren't actually even crazy anymore. Now, are they necessarily good? Uh, no, not necessarily, especially given the latest quarter. But are they bad? <laughs> not compared to when they were trading at 15 times higher these multiples. That's what I will say, boys. But anyway, my friends, that is my thoughts on this company as of right now. Again, this is one that's added to the watch list. You know, I'm trying to expand a little bit. We have SoFi on there now. We have AMC on there now. Upstart's getting added. I'm going to keep my eye on these companies. I'm going to keep my eyes on the charts. See how investors continue to react. And ultimately see if, you know, we see a short squeeze anytime soon. Oh, again, look. It's, it's, it's moving up, boys. It's moving up, guys. Boom. If you watched this video all the way till the end, you, my friend, are a true legend. I really do appreciate you being here from the bottom of my heart. Your support really does mean the world to me, my friend. Please, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, drop me a comment down below, and subscribe if you're new around here, because again, all of that helps me out so, so much. Boom, another little uptick, baby. But anyway, guys, I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. I'm going to see you for another video very soon. Peace.